I've always been something of a tinkerer. Ever since I learned to solder, and probably earlier, I've enjoyed toying around with electronics, computers, and technology generally, learning how it works in ways I can manipulate it. Though one might think, since I'm now a doctoral student in rhetoric and composition, that I've traded my interest in technology for an interest in books, I've never really separated the two in my head. I've loved books and text for as long as I've been interested in technology, and I frequently find myself productively bouncing between the two as I work. If I get stuck on a paper, I'll open up software on my computer and work on some music, or more recently, I'll grab some circuit-bent thingamajig laying on my cluttered desk. It helps me think. Just as I'm always trying to learn more about rhetoric, writing, and language, I'm also always trying to become more knowledgeable about the technology that surrounds me. This is especially true when it comes to composing technologies. In fact, you're watching me as I learn how to use a new machine, and I like to think of it as a composing technology itself. I'm using a 3D printer to print a design borrowed from John Sherrill, who is himself a doctoral student in rhetoric and composition at Purdue. This is actually my first time using a 3D printer at the local hackerspace where I'm a member, though other members at the space had run me through how to use it before. The material artifact that I'm composing is John Sherrill's Feminism Fist. The so-called maker movement has become increasingly popular in recent years, but there have been criticisms about who gets to be included in that movement. John's design, which is available under Creative Commons on the website Thingiverse, engages these criticisms to show that the movements and communities surrounding 3D printing are themselves a place for feminism. Moreover, this small argument of John's can be printed by anyone who has access to a 3D printer. The design is finished, though I had a bit of trouble removing it from the print bed, as you can see. In a time where there always seems to be some new way to compose, it is good to know that these technologies are understandable, can be learned, and can be employed. Inevitably, after learning this new composing technology, however, there'll be another one just as exciting and useful right around the corner waiting to be engaged.